Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making mind-blowing caramel brownies. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350 and grease and line an 8 by 8 inch baking dish with parchment paper. Now, in a big bowl, I have one cup of melted butter. It's unsalted. I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder to this. You could use Dutch process or natural. Both will be delicious. That is 75 grams. Normally, I would sift the cocoa powder, but because we're blooming it in this warm butter, don't worry about it. Okay, we're gonna give this a whisk. It'll break up all the lumps of cocoa powder and work it into a wonderful glossy chocolate mixture. Time for a quarter cup or 50 grams of granulated sugar and one packed cup or 220 grams of light brown sugar. This is a lumpy mess though, so... Ooh, hmm. Break it up in your hands carefully just to give those lumps a head start. Otherwise, you'll be whisking forever. These brownies are gonna be so good. I have been making them on repeat and they're becoming a favorite with all my friends. Time to add three eggs in. Eggs are gonna help hold everything together. In this recipe, they're acting as a binding agent. And of course, the yolks add a little bit more richness, but let's be honest, the butter is there to do that job. I'm also adding in a tablespoon of vanilla. And to balance all this out, half a teaspoon of salt. This, however, is kosher salt. If you're using a fine grain salt, I would use a heaping quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna set my scale aside and whisk this until it is nice and smooth. This is an important step, so whisk, 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 and if you don't want to, you can use an electric mixture. So mixing in this step is helping everything mix together, of course, but you're also dissolving some of those sugars and that can give you that beautiful crackly top that a lot of people really cherish in a brownie. These brownies might just be topped with caramel and a little bit of flaked sea salt, so you don't really notice the top. Okay, that looks gorgeous. Oh my gosh, and I wish you could smell this. Now we're gonna add one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. It's 180 grams, along with one cup or 120 grams of all-purpose flour. That's all you need to hold this entire brownie together. I'm just using this as a scoop because it actually holds way more flour than you need, which is why a scale is so nice. Now my scale is done. I'm going to stir this in carefully. I don't want to overmix the batter and get a brownie that's anything less than melt in your mouth amazing. Stir this until it's just combined and that last streak of flour disappears. And it's way easier with a spatula than it is with a whisk. This looks amazing. I need half of it in my pan right now. This is basically a sandwich. So on the bottom and the top, we have brownie. And in the middle, we have the most amazing gooey caramel. And it does not have to be exactly 50% on the top and the bottom. It could be a little bit more or less. So don't break the scale out just yet. You do want to smooth that out into a nice even layer though, because the caramel will just flow wherever it goes. Set your brownies aside. Now let's talk about the caramels. For this, we're gonna use some chewy caramels. They're pre-made and delicious. Unwrap these, and we want about 10 to 11 ounces. It's really up to you. 11 ounces if you're pouring caramel all over the top, and 10 ounces if you're not. I pre-unwrapped some of these thinking, oh, I'll save time for the video. But you saw how soft they are? They're all stuck in this bowl. Look, they just like melted in here. It's not even hot right now. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> Grab a small saucepan and you're gonna place this over medium low heat. Open up a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk, one of my favorite things to eat. Ah, I actually put it in my coffee and it's amazing. We're gonna warm this up and you need to stir it around because the edges can kind of get burnt. And by the by, if you wanna make this from scratch, yeah, good for you. You can use my caramel recipe from the caramel apple post, which is also a video and I'll put a link in the description box below for that. Uh. <laughs> so stuck. Oh, why did I unwrap these early? <laughs> okay, got two out. Uh, don't unwrap your caramels too early, just as you warm this milk. Oh, I should have buttered this before <laughs> I put them in. Hmm, that's a good note for you. If you're unwrapping your caramels early, <sighs> add a, oh, it's burnt. So make sure you stir frequently because this will burn on the bottom, you won't even know. <laughs> Not that it's ever happened to me. <laughs> so, while well, that's happening, okay. Ah, oh, success, it came out. 
If you wanna unwrap your caramels ahead of time, go ahead and spray that bowl with a little bit of baking spray or just grease it. My sweetened condensed milk is nice and warm, so I'm gonna add that caramel blob right in there and it will melt eventually. It's better if it's not one giant piece, <laughs> but it is what it is. You might have recognized the packaging. Those caramels were, of course, Werther's Originals, Grandma's favorite. But Brian loves them too. I actually had to hide them so he wouldn't eat them all. <laughs> Once your caramels are almost melted, remove from heat and just keep stirring. That residual heat left over will melt everything and you don't have to worry about anything burning. This looks amazing. So if you see any lumps, don't worry about it. Everything will just get sorted out in the bake. But if you're a double Virgo and you can't take it, have a whisk <laughs> and just whisk them away and they'll be gone and so smooth and amazing. Reserve about a third of the caramel for later. Let's just gracefully put that into a little bowl. The remaining caramel will go right over that brownie layer. Look at that. Totally snuck a bite off camera. So good. Smooth that out into an even layer just so it reaches the edge and nothing is pooled up. I'm already fantasizing about eating a giant piece of this with my coffee. Ah, delicious. The remaining brownie batter goes on top. You can spoon it out or use a triggered ice cream scoop like this. Just don't try and press it in. Um, it'll totally level itself out. And if you used way more than half of the brownie batter on your uh, bottom and there's not enough to cover the top, don't worry about that. It'll find a way, and even if there's caramel poking out, it'll just look amazing. Once all your brownie batter is out, you'll see it's already starting to melt because the caramel is so warm. Now you can gently do a little spreading if you want. You're really just nudging it along. It's not a full smooth. My brownies are ready to go into the oven, 350 for 35 to 45 minutes. Less time means a gooier brownie, maybe a little bit more stretched too, but even 45 will still have a nice pull and a delicious, delicious texture. Here you go. Let your brownies cool completely before cutting them. They're gonna be molten otherwise. Now, ah, oh, my handles worked. I love an easy release. Allow your brownies to cool completely before giving them a cut. Warm up the remaining caramel on 50% power, just like 30 seconds or so, and then drizzle over your brownies along with a sprinkle of salt. Now they're ready to enjoy. This brownie, oh my gosh, do you see this? <laughs> Pure magic. It's chocolate caramel melt in your mouth, decadent amazingness. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my chocolate playlist.